it's 11.29 right now, and we are about to start the line art um, presentation. Um, well, I've got more people than I was expecting, and uh, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> So is this thing rolling? Okay, I guess so. So uh, line art and beyond. So I'm Yiming. You probably know me as the line art guy for the past few years. I have been developing this uh, non-photorealistic renderer or thing for grease pencil in Blender for the past few years. And on and off, of course, I'm not a full-time developer. And uh, initially, this starts as a Google Summer of Code project, and I just uh, um, keep uh, optimizing the thing and make it better and better. And they gave me 50 minutes. I probably won't take as long time, so uh, you guys will have more time to interject and uh, maybe questions, and I could uh, answer them as good as I can. So, um, there are so many of you here, and I'm not sure uh, how many of you is like more on the programming side. Could you give me a show of hands? Okay, and uh, how many of you guys are like more of the user guys and artists who just use? Oh, okay, there are way more artists than like programming guys. So that's expected. Okay. Uh, I will make sure like uh, this presentation is uh, understandable for like most of you guys and make it clear and uh, let you understand how the line art works uh, and the ways we are planning to improve it. Um, let me see. Um, <laughs> developers probably would understand it better in, for some concepts, but I don't know. If you have any questions, just ask and uh, Sound right? Okay, let's begin. So, some brief history of me and the project of line art. So, I am a industrial design major. Uh, so, it is my job to actually produce some um, uh, product renderings of uh, like gadgets and stuff. And we need to do like uh, three view or uh, orthographic views to uh, give them to like patent registration for these kind of stuff. And uh, I was trying to use an open source workflow for this, this kind of thing. And at the time, uh, when I was in college, there wasn't uh, any like very good solutions to doing this kind of line renderings for products. But there's one uh, in as like freestyle and there is another one uh, which using the drawing workbench of FreeCAD, but um, these two are not very much to my liking, and sometimes they have uh, very serious problems that prevent me from using them. So I kind of feel like, okay, I probably would write a tool my 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 own. Okay. Um, so and and as well because I am in student at I'm. I'm in college at that time, so I have plenty of times on my hands. <laughs> so <laughs> I think, well, it probably won't hurt, right? I just dabble around and try things. So initially, I, I was using freestyle, and I found a lot of problems. Uh, probably you guys too. Uh, the problems with freestyle is um, that it might be very good for like stylized renderings. It has a lot of adjustments and line styles you can use, but uh, there are some fundamental issues with the way it generates these lines uh, that like this. For example, if you see these three intersecting cubes, you probably wouldn't imagine the line to be look like that. But this is what freestyle like spits out uh, without any adjustments. I would I could probably make it work correctly if I subdivide the cube, but that kind of defeat defeat the purpose because if you cannot um, output a correct correct result on a very simple mesh, then there there's probably something fundamentally wrong with how you process the ge geometry and. Be it, it's 
a little bit better for organic models because you already have a lot of uh, triangles and uh, but it's kind of not to my liking for my purposes. So the main thing is ambiguous visibility. So you can see some of lines should be visible, but not some of the lines uh, should not be visible, but still visible. And uh, another problematic thing with freestyle is that it, the performance is dependent on feature sizes inside the camera. So you could have a very, very complex model in the camera, but it's very, very far away. And at, the, at this time, freestyle would be super fast since it's a very small, uh, tiny dot on your screen. But if you zoom in, especially when you want to see a structure of a very complex mesh, once you zoom in, the thing fills up the screen. That's where the problem begins. You would see a lot of uh, flickering lines and uh, the performance goes right down here. Okay, and of course, no intersections. That's what's, that was a common problem. So the fundamental thing I have to deal with at first is the sub-edge visibility. So freestyle is not going to let you have a portion of uh, edge that is visible and the portion is not. And when simplifying the view map of um, freestyle, it kind of gets, gets, gets you to this weird result. So my program initially, it had nothing to do with Blender. I, prob I probably just a user uh, for Blender at the moment. And I, I know some OpenGL and I did some coding on my own and I did a like line rendering program standalone and which imports OBJ and spits out some uh, uh, renderings that I could use. And at the time, uh, it doesn't even have PNG output. Like all these images, I have to use screen grab to actually <laughs> produce a usable result. So I was pretty dumb. I, I mean, I have limited skills, so that's understandable. <laughs> and uh, of course, these, these are my, all my artworks. And uh, this, this was a more complex one and uh, probably available on my art station anyway. And if I were to load this model into freestyle at this close distance, all the um, visible invisible relationship will be like uh, unacceptable, unacceptable and also um, very slow. So next, uh, next I get to know this thing called GSOC or Google Sum of Code and Blender happens to be mentoring uh, this GSOC activity. So I was suggested I could port this tool into Blender so that more people can use it. And uh, basically, initially, the first two times I did it uh, within the mind of, I just play, play around and explore some algorithms. And maybe it could be usable, but um, I wasn't really uh, thinking about of the production stage of line art. So at that time, it's more like a chaos stage. Mm, but somewhat okay, because in 2.7, times, uh, the internal structure is a lot easier to handle. And so at that time, uh, it's called LANPR. I don't even know why I called it that. It's probably because my net handle is little a and I just little a NPR. Uh, and it has three modes, CPU, GPU, and a image yeah. tracing mode. But, well, quickly we found out these other two modes are not quite useful and I focus my energy on the CPU mode. It's, that is the traditional line art algorithm. Um, this is the model I got from Blend Swap. I forgot credit the artist. I should probably add in the description later uh, afterwards. And uh, it works. And at the time, Line, line Art was a render engine um, that uh, it has some uh, abilities to do something like um, renders quickly and you can adjust afterwards without like freestyle, you have to render again. Um, but um, it's kind of uh, hard for us to um, configure and the material is it's not uh, compatible with what we have in inside Blender. So 
uh, well, it at least produced a result. I don't need to, to use screen grab anymore. So I consider this mostly a success, but, <laughs> but it's not really useful, okay? To make it, um, to make it uh, as render engine probably didn't release the full potential of this line art algorithm. So later I was suggested to put this into Grease Pencil. There are some good things about it because, well, with line art you get very accurate uh, occlusion info and that info could be used to generate Grease Pencil lines. And Grease Pencil lines, as we know, are editable and the artist could use the result as an intermediate thing and uh, customize on the result to get whatever they need. So it was much more flexible than if I were to do a render engine. And, but the adaptation is pretty limited. There afterwards, I found out that um, a lot of things didn't go as what I expected. Um, in the East, things are probably better because uh, in Japan and China, we had a lot of comic um, industry, manga industry, and they, they like the technical pen kind of look very much, but uh, I found out it's, it's not the same with what we have, what we have here in the West. Um, and, and also, there are some issues that out of my hands, first is the grease points are aliasing. Uh, that's been a huge issue. And um, as far as I know of, uh, it's still an issue in GP 3.0 and we probably gonna revamp the, how we render the uh, grease pencil thing to get it right. And the main problem are slow and uh, the still very intertwined logic, okay? I was, I was thinking, okay, this logic seems to be pretty nice and flexible, but in, in the end, uh, it confuses a lot of artists and users. You have to filter by collection, by object, and as you know, you probably use line art and uh, all the intersections are spit out together and you cannot do anything about it. And that is very hard to configure. And another thing with the modifier setup of line art is that composition is a bit hard because modifier only gets their input geometries from this current view layer and if you want to uh, if you want to have another view layer just for the grease pencil it will not get the objects so it is kind of binded you to using the current view layer and you cannot do anything about it and finally we have a lot of crashes of course, <laughs> I'm, I'm not a that professional uh, developer, so it took me a lot of while to track down all the bugs and stuff. So why is line art like this? So in the beginning, I was thinking, okay, this method is probably gonna be better than freestyle and probably gonna be faster. And uh, something didn't go ex as expected, I probably would share with you guys and uh, and let you guys know what exactly is happening under the hood of line art and share with you guys about how we could improve upon this design or revamp to a new design, who knows? So line art uh, is kind of weird because it's a geometry based algorithm. I mean, this title is a little bit, um, a little bit wrong because everything is geometry based, right? Um, what I'm trying to say is it's not based on sampling or pixels. So line art doesn't rely on pixel information to um, calculate its result, but relies on only the geometry or the vector info to like generate lines. And finally they render into pixels. So that's <laughs> what this title actually means. Mm, so if there is ideal like floating point, there's no flo floating point precision issue. Uh, I, line art ideally could generate a precise cut of this geometry of which line is visible and which line is not. But that's not the case with modern computers. We, uh, we all, all have precision issues with floating points. Uh, so it has pros and cons 
uh, to calculate stuff in the geometry stage rather than pixel stages, as you might see in the following slides. And also, it's not suitable for everything. Uh, I designed line art um, in the mind of I want to use this for um, pr product rendering and uh, not quite for the character rendering, which a lot of you probably do. So uh, it's not going to be as suitable for like organic models. Um, it's purely um, decided by the fact the line art is designed this way. So let's take a look. Uh, so stage one, line art first loads the geometry. Nice. So it detects where the contour line is going to be and all the other feature lines. They record these lines and project them into your camera like this. So now you, in your camera, you have like all these lines presented. And the next stage is line art would um, try to divide the frame into different density blocks and using these blocks to assign um, threads to work on the uh, occlusion of these lines with all the triangles. Okay, if you have a triangle that's in front of a line, then the line is occluded in that segment. Easy to understand, right? So like this, this is what one thread sees when it's um, working on the occlusion of one piece of line or an edge or whatever. So it detects where the line is and it's check, check out the square which contains triangles and lines where they overlap they would check for the occlusion whether the triangle is in front of the edge or is in back of the edge or it's partly um, and then it registers the cuts as you can see all the one uh, segments are uh, means that um, these segments are occluded by one layer of face and after you paired all the lines with all the triangles they might cross, you get a full intersect, uh, you get a full occlusion. And you basically register the cuts on an edge. So it's the segment of the edge that actually has the occlusion info, not the whole edge. And when we done everything, we got occlusion right. Sounds easy, right? Okay, we handle the uh, cusps much better than freestyle would because um, obviously we handle the occlusion info at the sub edge level. It's not per edge, so we can have the edge disappearing at any segment or up reappearing at any point, and it will not uh, be erroneously like registered. Yeah, it, it is simple, right? But of course, we have a lot of caveats. So consider this. We have um, three kinds of situations um, where the triangle could be in related to the lines. First, the line is in front of the triangle. Of course, the triangle does not occlude the line. It doesn't do anything. And the second one is the triangle in front of the line, and it will cut the line in between the occluded places. And the third situation is a little bit, little bit more like complicated. You have to decide where the line should pass through the triangle and cut them appropriately. And you think this is all? Nope. We have a ton of other situations which it took me like maybe one or two years of on and off work to get every kind of situation exactly right. So you have maybe the line is originating from the triangle or the line is within the triangle or even the line is sharing a point with the triangle and accounting for the direction we are cutting. So the line is directional, you can cut it from left to right or the right to left, you get different results. And accounting for all these situations, the cutting algorithm actually gets quite complex. This is one caveat. And also the acceleration structure, of course, 
when you have a million of faces in your scene, you won't want to compare one edge with every single triangle and see if they are occluding or not. So we have this tiling structure to allow us to see which triangles might have potential to collide with the line. And building this ar uh, acceleration structure does cost us like time. It's just like building BVH in the con a traditional sense of like rendering. It's like the same thing, the quad tree, they, they call this the quad tree because it's like four directions. And uh, they call this the quad tree. A quad tree is basically a 2D BVH and it's used to determine like uh, colliding pairs. And building this structure costs time and running this structure might still uh, require us to have logs and which <laughs> uh, degrades the performance a little bit more, which we were talking in the uh, afterwards. So that's, there are a lot of caveats to this and I spend a lot of time to stabilize uh, this algorithm. And uh, this, this was the actual tile visible in my standalone program, which doesn't exist anymore, but I have found screenshot of this program and you can faintly see the bigger tiles and smaller tiles on the more densely packed areas. So this is the acceleration structure. Mm, let me see. Okay, apparently th only the counter is not enough. So in the, especially in the manga industry as where I come from, I come from China, the uh, manga industry is quite big and shadows are a highly requested feature because we want to have uh, like trace, traceable lines around all the projected shadows and uh, it's sometimes weird to have a character that has lines, but you don't have like shadow lines around the projected area. So shadow has been a more important part, but I'm not sure in, in Europe, a lot of people would use this, but this took me some time to actually develop. So let's see what line art does with the shadow. So you have a light, of course, you're projecting shadow and it's either gonna be a directional light or a point source. Okay, line art only supports these two kinds of lines. It will treat the, line, uh, treat the light object as the camera and do the same projection and occlusion test as if it was the camera. Then we, we would find out that the lines visible to light will be the same as the, um, will, will become the shadow terminator. So this way we determined how the shadow would look like. And we can cast this back to any receiving services like this like one edge of shadow can produce multiple edges of projected lines. And then we run the occlusion test again, we get a perfectly rendered shadowed scene in line art. And this basically concludes what line art does. Of course, there are chaining, there are simplification, but these are like steps ran afterwards of the main algorithm, okay. So challenges about shadowing. So it is hard to get everything right. And uh, it, we need to also consider what looks good uh, uh, from what's right. And we cast shadow onto faces and we want to make sure that um, these edges on triangles doesn't interfere with each other. So you cannot have a triangle that's occluding a edge that's directly sitting on top of it. So that's gonna be a problem. And also with shadow in mind, we can have region filtering. As you can see, all the lines inside the shadow area are removed. And this could give us a very good uh, flexibility for artistic ex expressions, I, I believe. And also, Additional feature is the enclosed contour. And uh, this uh, modifies the occlusion map and uh, enclose all the shadow regions and remove anything that's lit in between. And for you, you can see that uh, we have reduced the complexity of the scene, but also preserved a very clear structural representation 
of the, the entire like uh, lighting situation, which is the artist probably would like this kind of thing better because it's decluttered and you can have more expressive um, lines this way. This was from another friend who gave me these models and let me test. And guess what? With enclosed counter feature, you can have like this charcoal drawing uh, look if you apply some effects on top of it. So this has been good. Um, so with line art, um, <laughs> with, with line art mechanism down, let's talk about the technical limitations of it and how we're gonna improve it. And of course, later we're gonna see a design of line art in geometry nodes, which is probably a lot of people would like. <laughs> yeah, of course. I'm looking forward to it as well, but I'm, I don't have consolidated design yet, so let's see. Uh, on the performance side, over the years, I have learned that we probably don't want to like uh, beat a dead horse. Like we already optimized line art algorithm for a long time and uh, some things we have tested and failed to improve and we probably want to go a different route than the current solution is providing us. So um, basically we want to tackle the locking issue and chaining performance and maybe we want to switch out to an entirely different algorithm for different cases such as organic models. Uh, let's talk about the thread clashing. As you see, we have the acceleration tile structure that uh, a triangle could span across multiple of these tiles and if happens to be, uh, if multiple threads happens to be working on that same triangle, they will have to use a lock and it's preventing this line art to be more performant than if, than if it will not have locks, I guess. <laughs> uh, let's see, so we could technically like copy the entire geometry for every single thread. This, this way we won't have any like interference between all the threads but uh, I don't think that's gonna be a viable solution. So we are gonna take a look at what's coming next. I'm trying to propose a alternative um, algorithm for occlusion test for line art, which is using limited samples along an edge and using ray tracing and to determine where the line is visible and where it is not. As you might imagine, this would lead to some uncertainty between the sample points. And if a feature is smaller than a sample point, it might not re register. So it is faster, it, does, it doesn't need to use logs, so it's able to run on GPU. So this is probably something like a lot more artists would desire because it's much faster to adjust and everything. Uh, it's less exact, but probably not going to matter if you are doing organic models since you, you like drawing itself has imper imperfections and a little imperfections like this probably won't matter in a large scale, especially if you have thicker strokes and stuff. So this is one of the things I would propose to replace the current uh, legacy line art algorithm. Um, the next, I would give a shout out to another fella named Jiang Wang Zwei, or I might be butchering her name, but um, this is a newer fully GPU line art algorithm developed by him or her, and uh, it does all the tracing on the GPU, it does even all the chaining on the GPU, which is probably much more suited for organic models. And, but it also has some problems because like line art, you can filter where your line came from. Your line could came from collection one or two. You could, could came from a cube or sphere. But this algorithm, like the image tracing algorithm will not be able to do that. But for a uniformly styled image, it's probably more suited. So, and it's faster. So depending on the usage, this algorithm might be preferred and you can check out his work at the following 
uh, URL. And the next one, we are gonna tackle the object loading thing. And of course, shout out to Sebastian. And uh, he helped me <laughs> like optimize a lot of line arts object thing. Um, we used to take a lot of time to triangulate, to find out the adjacent faces, and to send these data into line art. But we, we realized, do we need, really need to have adjacency info? Like, we probably don't want to have uh, this kind of info for speed. And since, if you probably use line art, you, you know there's an option called allow overlapping edges, which basically it does not check if an edge is from a triangle. Instead, it will check uh, the endpoints. Are the endpoints the same from the triangle's endpoints? And that turned out to be not slower than I expected. So we probably don't need to have adjacent, adjacency information. So we could save a lot of time by removing this step and directly feeds all the triangle piles into line art. This could be a optimization plan. Uh, on the overall design part, uh, so the modifiers are evaluated with dependency graph or by dependency graph, or I, I would say that. So the, it's currently a hack for line art to load the entire scene because line art object is also in the scene, it cannot possibly depend on the scene and also write into the same thing again. So there are some hacks to allow this to work correctly, but this is the root of a lot of crashes you've been having. And uh, of course, other design factors like line types and high precision cuts for like dense, densely packed models, uh, essentially like, um, the current approach needs to be optimized for the later upcoming node-based uh, line art uh, implementation. So we cannot directly read scene that's not uh, conforming to the design standards of Blender. Instead, we could feed geometries into line art as like in the geometry node basically, and uh, we can get rid of all the attributes that we are previously recording in this edge. Because we, once we uh, geometry node the line art, we're gonna use the generic attributes instead of this hacky approach of uh, like intersection ID, object ID, material silhouette, recordings, whatever. So per segment attribute, it's gonna be like this. So when you are trying to filter a, um, a result from line art, you will probably gonna need to assign attributes to inputting geometries as filter groups. And afterwards, when you are done calculating line art, we can connect the output and separate the geometries to shade differently with the same filter group you assigned previously. And this would also tackle the intersection filtering. So as you may know, line art doesn't really filter the intersection correctly, but if with attribute-based filtering, you can assign different attributes to different input geometries, then filter the intersection of these attributes. Like the red lines are gonna have both attributes from one and three, and the yellow ones are gonna have two and three. And by identifying these attributes, you are able to separate these lines and shade them differently. So a generic line visibility node is probably gonna be the next line art geometry node design, and it will extract the core visibility feature and allow you to input a geometry and camera, of course, to an output, the result edge segments as curves. So basically it looked like this. The cube and, okay, two cubes, and we can assign different groups, like area group one and two, we join them together 
send into the line art node, and we separate these geometries with group number one. And if the group is one, it goes to style group one. And if the group is not one, it goes to two. And this way, we have a more generic way of doing line art in geometry nodes. Let me see. And for feature line detection, we can also expose that to uh, geometry nodes instead of doing it all inside line art. And this is uh, the, how, we could, uh, how we could detect the crease lines. Like if you have a cube and you have an edge angle and you find the edge angle is less than a certain threshold, we can determine that um, this is a crease line. And then we record this crease line as attribute and store it in it and connect the geometry into line art. Then line art would know that we need to calculate this line. And so we don't need to have line art do, to do this hacky uh, feature line detection. Filtering by group like this, so you could have a visible group and a attribute group like group one. You form an add logic. So this, this way you could filter out uh, what's inside group one and it is also visible. And this could be a, the simplest uh, um, visible line filtering uh, schema of the new line art design. And also, it's much easier to do intersection filtering as well. So you have you want to show like the intersection lines between group one and two. Basically, you just put an end in between and the lines who have both group one attribute and group two attribute can be filtered as the intersection line. So it's much easier to understand and uh, much less confusion to the users. So the most frequently asked question for me is that, can we even make this more generic? Like line visibility is good, but we kind of want to expose a more generic version of line art into geometry nodes like this. So you have some geometry. You first detect feature lines as one node, do visibility as another node, the chain lines as an even third node, and you got profit, right? Uh, the problem with this is that um, line art is dependent on its internal data structures and exposing these data structure could pose a design problem for the geometry nodes because as we know as we all know that geometry nodes does doesn't have custom structures for you to pass around so we can only pass the geometries and in that case it's going to be very inefficient inefficient to like expose line art internal data and you probably would have a lot more repeated calculations this way so it is possible but we could trade off performances. And since there are no custom data, data sockets, and we, we will do a lot of more calculations. So it's possible, but I would propose to not do this in the near future. And this was the proposed data structure change, just like the Grease Pencil 3 change. Like we want to have attributes as a more generic way of storing uh, properties instead of any other hacky approach I had previously. And uh, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> how about baking? So baking is another topic uh, people would want to ask once we have geometry nodes as the line art approach because um, geometry nodes will calculate uh, one frame and one frame only, and you move to the next frame, it will up update it again. Now we have simulation nodes. Things might be a little bit more easier, but uh, baking is kind of a problem because we probably want to apply modifier, and then we get one frame and not, not anymore. So now we have geometry nodes tool. We probably want to invoke these tools at every frame of 
the range you want, and possibly you can have a baking done this way. And also it simplifies the caching of line art data. So you, if you have line art modifier, there is a lot of caching going on if you like uh, want to reuse the previously calculated uh, view map. But this time with um, geometry nodes, you just calculate once and filtering all the things and combine them together. So no need to cache. So there's a little bit good thing over there. Um, another, another good thing is that we can additionally store vertex attributes for line art to pass to the output. So we can have, uh, for example, normals and apply lighting effects on the thickness of the grid pencil line. And this could be uh, a little bit slower as you get more attributes into the vertex and lines and of course, a little bit more memory cost. Uh, you could probably use uh, attribute transfer for this, but it's not as important. Uh, the, probably the last thing, last thing for optimization is the chaining. Uh, we want to trade off quality and speed, so a lot of times the chaining is not perfect. Uh, the design of Grace Pencil Stroke means that we cannot have a stroke terminate and uh, not smoothly interpolate between visible and invisible, so that we have to break all those visible and invisible strokes into different strokes. And uh, also, a shout out to Sebastian, and he implemented this smooth counter modifier from uh, this address, which allows us to flip those um, jagged triangles to form a continuous contour line. And this way, we can have a um, in fully enclosed contour on subdivided models like this. And this is also beneficial for us because we want to do grease pencil filling. And once the contour is guaranteed to be closed, we can have a guaranteed perfect filling of grease pencil. It is a little bit slow, but on the plus side, uh, this algorithm doesn't need to run fully because line art can handle partly visible edges. So the algorithm can, could be run in like uh, half of the stage, then pass it to line art, you can get very perfect result. It can be made into a form of a modifier or a node. Uh, these are both acceptable and we can see what we can implement in the future. And also another additional algorithm is the temporal co coherency thing. And, and the problem with temporal coherency in Grace Pencil is that it depends on previous frames. So when you want to modify one frame, every frame down the line needs to change to match the requirements of the temporal coherency. So that's not probably gonna be inside render anytime soon, but we could do some researches on how we could uh, let Grease Pencil handle this. Uh, the flat attribute thing is another thing I could propose for, the sim for simplifying the stroke drawing. As you can see, if you have four uh, segments of the Grease Pencil, now we have to do actual fourth strokes because Grease Pencil attributes are smoothly interpolated. And if we have the flat output in the shader, we could use flat interpolation or if any OpenGL developers would call the geo provoking vertex method and using the flat attributes, we can have one stroke with four different terminating uh, attributes. So it's gonna save a lot of data in the terms of line art and also it would be um, like much, much faster to render as well. Okay, this is uh, this originally line art design like this because um, Grease Pencil doesn't allow me to do this continuous line drawing, so I have to break it up on visibility, but if we, we can implement this flat attribute thing, the um, 
breaking up might not be necessary. So we can have, can have a continuous contour drawing, even if it's jagged, it's probably not gonna be as visible as we have it now. And also we have intersection problems, but this is something I'm gonna solve down the line, so I'm not gonna bother anybody with this. Uh, finally, the um, Z order and transparency thing in grease pencil is probably gonna need a revamp because now we have the strokes overlapping each other to pr produce this kind of diamond shape, like uh, overfill, but with um, file, uh, with, uh, with layer folders, you probably can combine the strokes into one layer, and one layer folder and adjust the transparency on its own for composition and you get semi-visible, but it's solidly filled strokes as a, as a entirety, not, not, not having these diamond shapes. And also a shout out to Shen Qiao's algorithm called Cello. This is a dynamically feel, uh, filled grease pencil algorithm. So when you can, you can actually adjust the filling of this, uh, of the areas by adjust the blue curve underneath this to animate stuff. I thought that would be pretty cool and it might be implemented into grease pencil as well. So my plans, uh, actually I, I have no idea because I'm, pro <laughs> I'm probably gonna start, uh, start investigating all the algorithm and these caveats very soon because now I have more time after I'm finished schools. Yeah, if there should be a time frame. I mean, first of all, I'm probably gonna help Falk on the Grace Pencil 3.0 thing, because obviously it's very new and a lot of tools are unfinished. Like you have basic drawing tools, like a lot of editing is still undone and probably gonna f help them there first. And support nodes and modifier migrations, that's for the, grid, uh, that's for the geometry nodes. And the line art node is probably gonna be developing parallel to Grease Pencil 3.0. And uh, when the geometry node for Grease Pencil is ready, line art node will probably be ready as well. The GPU algorithm needs some more explorations. Uh, I'll see what I can do, but it's probably gonna be done since it's much more performant and the artist would desire it more. So sometime, in the 4.0, we probably will have line art node probably 4.3, I guess. And for GPU lines, it's probably gonna be down the line 5.0, 5.0, but I, I, it not, might not be 5.0, might also be 4. Point something, depends on if I have time or not. <laughs> and wait, hold on. Even more distant plan, plans? Well, these are more fuzzier like anti-aliasing, I'm not a proficient geo developer, but I know some stuff I probably would help. Um, I wish I, we have Tony Clement to write graphics code this way and <laughs> we could have flawless rendering uh, setup, but uh, for Grease Pencil, uh, it's kind of there, there, we have some problems, I probably would help them uh, solve them and uh, flat attribute support for better chaining result and uh, down the line, other camera distortions, forced perspective and fish eye. So that's about some plans I could think of. If my change, I will see what I can do. <laughs> okay, some extra advices for like in general, not limited to line art is that um, mostly for artists, it's like shapes need to be combined first of all. As you can see, this is a shadow of a bunch of planks. You might want to call it leaves, okay? Like uh, shapes like this, if you, you combine them, you can read them as a unity. But if you do not combine them, you will read as a bunch of random lines and you do not know what's going on. And the same uh, is true for any line-based algorithm and you want the shape to be simplifi simplified and readable. A lot of cases when I see people doing models is that they have like a, an architecture models, they detail down to all the handrails 
on the outside of the architecture, but the architecture is like 100 meters away. So everything there is going to be a black splotch. You probably don't want that. So shapes need to be combined. You probably want a silhouette of the handrail, but you don't, doesn't want a whole bunch of lines there. And this is also related to, related to proper level of detail. And just like this monkey here, if you zoom out too much, you probably want to only have a silhouette instead of a bunch of lines and prevent you from reading the shape. Uh, so a lot of people uh, come to me and say, well, this line art thing is still very slow and I check, check the file. They have a bunch of extra details in there and it's not even going to be visible in the final output. So sometimes when modeling, the, when modeling for rendering lines, you probably want to take care of the level of details in mind. That's for the art side. Okay. I think mostly it's just it. And uh, I'm done. And uh, I'm here for questions on the implementation of Blyan. <laughs> Yeah, I know, I ramble a lot for the technical part. I hope it doesn't bore like a lot of you, but anything you have in mind for line art and its flanks, you can ask me right now. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so thanks for this cool talk, your presentation. Okay. Oh, okay. So the question is, should we have a separate type of graph than geometry nodes for specifically line art? Uh, the current plan is we do not want to have that because line art is going to spit out generic geometry at the moment. And the point for this is that you can reuse all the other geometry nodes for line art for its output. So it is, it is better we keep everything line art related in the geometry nodes and this way you get a lot more flexibility you don't need to implement any extra nodes for the separate node graph okay <laughs> any more questions okay Oh, I see. So the question is, um, when we parallelize the algorithm, why should we copy the triangles? Uh, that's because like, you, a triangle could span across multiple tiles, and it could be worked on at the same time by a lot of threads. And a thread could also work on multiple tiles, then have the same triangle, so the triangle does not want to be worked again. So inside the tri every triangle there is a registration for every thread. It's like, for example, you have eight threads, you have eight threads, then every single triangle would have eight bits for the thread to register that this triangle I have already worked on and some triangles have not. So uh, in order to make this workable, you have to kind of copy the triangle because you actually need to change what's inside the triangle. The same happens with lines. Of course, you are cut the line, but the line also have these bits where it stores, oh, this line have already been worked, or this line have, haven't not. So that's why we uh, need to copy the triangles when we do parallelization. But this is um, pretty memory hungry, so we probably won't go that direction any further. So we want to use GPU for the sampling based approach. Okay, thanks. Hi.
Yes, and technically, yes, because when, for example, if you're doing uh, traditional 2D art, like if you're drawing like manga stuff, you probably won't have to draw like every single window on a building when you, the building is very far away. So that's kind of a generic advice for uh, how do you handle like uh, a fairly detailed scene because you want, don't want anything extra to like grab the attention of what's what you need it to. So uh, ideally, you should have modeled the places differently when you are far away and when you are close, close and nearby. And I think uh, it's gon probably going to cause a little bit problem in production because you probably want more efficiency and you don't want to have a lot of models scattering around and configure the, the level of detail. But uh, in the general sense, you probably want it to because it's going to be a problem for every single algorithm. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was hoping that you would first you know, simplify for me. Well, I mean, the, the line art does have silhouette feature. So maybe you can have the same geometry in the background, but you use the silhouette feature and it will automatically just outline everything, but nothing in between. This is going to be like easier for you to track all the shapes and for it to be readable. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? I guess uh, that's about it. And thanks for coming. And enjoy the rest of the show.